This is your News Source Evening Bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 27th day of March in the year 2019. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Although the ruling by the Court of Appeal has invalidated the no-confidence motion against the government, President David Granger today indicated that his administration will still be going to the Parliament to approve funding to meet the needs of the Guyana Elections Commission. Regardless of what happened at the Supreme Court, regardless of what happened at the Court of Appeal, regardless of what happened at the uh, CCJ, we are going to ensure that we satisfy GCOM's request. I have made it clear that um, the government, the executive branch, cannot interfere in the internal administration and decision-making in GCOM. That we cannot intrude, we cannot interfere, we cannot you know, direct them or instruct them. In a recent letter to the president as it prepared for possible early elections, the Guinea Elections Commission, through its chairman, stated that it needs just over $3.5 billion for the preparations and hosting of regional and national elections. Today, the president said his government will ensure it addresses the GCOM needs. The president reiterated that his government will satisfy the needs of GCOM to ensure clean and credible elections. And as far as possible, we are going to satisfy those needs. We're going to go back to the parliament, whoever attends. We're going to go back to parliament and make requests to ensure that GCOM has everything it needs. We are committed to having clean elections, credible elections in, in this country. And um, as I said, I will engage GCOM um, to ensure that uh, the request made to me by the chairman will be satisfied. In other words, <laughs> we are going to ensure that whenever, whatever happens at any level of the judicial system, Guyana is going to be prepared. President Granger said he is pleased with the responses he has been getting from the Chairman of the Elections Commission in response to his queries. The Elections Commission has started its preparations for house-to-house -house registration. That process was catered for in the last budget. More news coming up in just a moment. GBTI is your Guyanese bank. A bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Hey, babe. Mm -hmm. Hello? Is Don me quite just done? <laughs> Buddy, you need to switch to GTT Fab 5. Fab 5? Activate the GTT Fab 5 plan today. For only 5,005, you get free unlimited calls to four of your closest family and friends, five gigs of data plus 250 text messages, and your Fab 5 friends can call you for free. GTT Fab 5. Oh, yeah, I like the switch. We Wait for a 5. Trending girl in Guyana. Somebody say Lola Doll. She presents her second annual birthday party Saturday, March 30th. It's the Red Carpet Affair. Somebody say Lola Doll. All going down in the real nightclub. You know, I heard it's one of the hottest nightclubs in Guyana. Who's live on the set? Cena. DJ Energy. Select Andre. And Gully Rasa Diamond. People, I want you to look out for celebrity guest appearance. Stay in tune. Know what's going down. Follow Lola Doll on Instagram and Facebook right now. At Lola Doll underscore Miss Important. Saturday the 30th of March. Get ready. Lola Doll. Big birthday party. It's the red carpet affair. Yo, the party that not got no more. 
Yes, yes. All girls, make sure you get your nails, your ear, your makeup done. Tired yeah. don't know Lola doll, say pretty girls. No, girls can't see me, I can't spoil them. Them a man clown for me, walk on them. Sponsored by Hits and Jams Entertainment. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Welcome back. Well, thousands of persons flogged the various government departments that were out to the coffee square today as part of the government's public day. The initiative saw government ministries and departments meeting with members of the public to have their concerns addressed. The Department of Housing's booth was the busiest and was active all day, as scores of persons raised issue about those house lots and the need for more of the government low-cost homes. Minister with Responsibility for Housing, Valerie Yearwood, explained that the government is making moves to get more land available so that house lots could be handed out. She explained to many of those gathered that while land might not be available in the areas they might prefer, there are lots available in other areas and persons should take advantage. New source spoke to some of the other persons who were gathered at the public day. This is a good, great um, move that this government has taken. And we are proud for this government for what they're doing. It's all as about the good life that, God, uh, that the government has promised us. And as you can read, this is what he put up. And he means good life for all. And you are continue people, you are coming to support you, our government because he mean good and he love each and every one of we. He ain't got the um, separation. He ain't giving we, no, he ain't paying none of we for do what we doing. Well, meeting with the people of Guyana out here is very interesting for everyone. And as far as I can see that everyone here, most people is getting through. But there's a lot on the land and severe business. I know how it's going. And I trust that they will be have more than this than going in than being just here. They will minister, will be able to be in their office of which they will have the the um, day of visitation and person will be able to meet them. Right about now, too late, too late shall be the cry. Have you heard what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is what it's looking like. Most of the people that come out here looking for house lot, and I could bet you, 90% of them ain't coming for food. Watch the face. They just come out here looking for something. The president got to come out here and address the nation and tell the nation exactly what went wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think he can get the young people them for come back. Guyanese are very forgiving, you know. Mm -hmm. You know though. You know, once you give you the right story, we can, we can forgive you and we can try again. Several government ministers were part of the public day also. Let's tell you now that the opposition leader through his attorneys has filed pleadings with the Caribbean Court of Justice, asking the court to throw out last Friday's ruling of the Guyana Court of Appeal and restore the validity of the no-confidence motion against the Guyana government. The court documents were filed yesterday with the Trinidad-based Caribbean Court of Justice. In the application, Mr. Jack Deal's attorneys are asking the Caribbean Court to issue an order setting aside and reversing Friday's ruling by the Court of Appeal, which invalidated the no-confidence vote. They also want the CCJ to rule that the December 21 no-confidence motion against the government of Guyana was validly passed by a majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. In addition, the opposition leader wants the court to declare that 33 votes constitute a majority within the meaning of the Constitution when it comes to the no-confidence motion. The Guyana Court of Appeal ruled last Friday that a simple majority and an absolute majority could not be seen as the same in the Constitution of Guyana, and therefore there would have been the need for an absolute majority of 34 votes for the motion to be passed. By a majority 2 to 1 margin, the judges of the Appeal Court of Guyana ruled that a no-confidence motion was not passed, based on 34 votes not being obtained. The opposition is pressuring the CCJ to have an early hearing of the case because of its national importance. On the labor front now, those workers who were fired at the Russell Bauxite Company are back on the job and the union and the company are now moving to put in place a new collective bargaining agreement. 
Work at the Russo Mines came to a halt back in February as the fired workers and others protested against the company. The Labor Department was forced to get involved and mediate the discussions between the two sides. Today, Minister responsible for Labor, Keith Scott, said he is pleased with the outcome. The role of the government also, that we have done what we had to do because we saw it above just a union problem. It was more or less a community effort, it was more or less a national situation. And we have been able to restore the balance and we have been able to get full acceptance, full recognition and respect to the laws of Guyana. And multinational companies, Brussels and any other company that comes into play must understand that our ministry, the Ministry of Social Protection, stands resolutely in defense of our integrity as a nation and our respect for our laws. Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali said the government had made clear its position with regards to the workers. She said Rousseau was asked to rehire the workers and to recognize the union and the company has done just that. First of all, I'm very happy the way um, the Rousseau issue has played out because um, as you would know that I did outline our demands from government and um, uh, I know that we have achieved because one, uh, they have recognized the union and that is very important. So I think the stage that we are at right now is where the union and management, they are discussing um, operational issues. Um, also the 61 workers have been reinstated. So I think it's good going. We are going uh, well. The Bauxite Workers' Union has been credited with sticking to its position and not budging on its demands. The union and the company have now committed to develop much closer ties. Guy Oil is a proud Guyanese-owned and Guyanese-operated company, serving our nation for over 42 years. All the profits remain in Guyana and are used for the development of our country. So when you buy fuel and lubricants from Guy Oil, you are directly contributing to Guyana's economic development. Let's continue to build this nation together. Fuel up and drive with Super 95 from Guy Oil. Fuel it up and drive! Guyana! Guyana! Extra Beer presents the youngest and the hottest dancehall artist, Alkaline! Alkaline! Make it pass all of the drama When them all pull up themselves We keep it calm I feel like my gang conquer the world now The Conqueror You can't stand with Live on Easter Saturday, April 20th, 2019, at the Guyana National Stadium, Providence. Music by DJ Magnum, Gully Russ, and Diamond, David Hyde, DJ Fresh, DJ Damien, and Andre, Bobby Kush from Jamaica, Super A, One Man Band, Alkaline Live, Alkaline Live, Easter Saturday, 20th of April, 2019, early bird tickets $2,500, after $3,000, stage front $15,000, stay tuned, tickets it's out soon. Guy in a national stadium. Providence. <laughs> Win big at this year's GMSA's Uncapped Marketplace by participating in the Save for the Flavor competition. Simply visit the booths and rate the products. Event starts at 10 hours on Sunday, March 31st at the Ghana National Stadium, Providence. See press for details or visit the Uncapped Facebook page. See you there! Across the region right now in Barbados, a ceiling of 50,000 Barbadian dollars on fines for sellers and importers of plastic bags is way too high, according to the opposition leader, Joseph Atherley. He contends that the measure which is part of the control of disposable plastics bill was onerous and could cripple small businesses. He has argued that instead of a one-size-fits-all approach to the deterrent component of the bill, the ceiling should have been lowered for those caught using plastics in their retail businesses. Under the new legislation, offenders would also have to pay a further 1,000 Barbadian dollars for each day or part thereof during which the offense continues after their conviction. But the opposition leader in Barbados said that while he understands government's rationale for such measures, he was not comfortable with giving a magistrate such a wide scope of discretionary power. 
The Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Dr. Hubert Minis, says that the Bahamas remains firm on its position on Venezuela and is backing an organization of American states' position that the polls in a South American country was an illegitimate election. He was among four CARICOM leaders, St. Lucia, Jamaica and Haiti, who met with the United States President Donald Trump last weekend at his private residence in Miami. Washington, backed by a number of its allies, are seeking to remove President Nicolas Maduro, who was sworn into office in January for a second consecutive term, with opposition leader Juan Guaido, who has since declared himself as the interim president of Venezuela. The Organization of American States has called the elections illegitimate. And finally tonight, British Prime Minister Theresa May has promised that she will stand down as Prime Minister if they back her deal. She told backbench Tories that she is prepared to leave the job earlier than expected in order to do what is right for the country and the party. The Prime Minister said that she knew that some MPs do not want her to lead the next phase of Brexit negotiations and she would not stand in the way of that. Boris Johnson has said he will now back the Prime Minister's deal according to the BBC. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.